Louise Rowan, welcome to The Sherlock Show. We have a really great show for you today. From an interview with a new powerhouse duo to a look behind the scenes at a shoot for a very exciting new Sherlock's venture. But first, let me introduce our very fabulous guests. I'm joined by the founder of fashion and homeware company, La Double J, JJ Martin, founder of jewellery brand Sophie Liss London, Sophie Liss, and business and mindset coach Nicola Charlotte. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hello. How are you on this fine Tuesday morning? Good. good. Very good. So I nice love the, the fashion diversity going on here. Yeah. I feel like everyone is doing their own thing. <laughs> We're representing. Yes, you are. You've flown in from Milan. I have. Yeah, where you live. You've lived for 25 years. 22. 22. 22 years. Amazing. But yes. you're here a fair bit. I do. I come, I pop over to London, Paris. A lot of time I spend in Los Angeles and New York as well. I grew up in Los Angeles. And Sophie, you're a London girl. I'm London. I just popped over from London Hill. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. I'm representing your I earrings. love it. They're your amazing. Shirts. They look so You good look so great, Louise. Oh, ditto. <laughs> and look at this pop of colour. You look amazing. Well, thank you. I was saying I, I normally tend to wear like plain outfits. Do you? Like, this is my opportunity. Adding a pop of colour. Um, it's a Tuesday, so why not? And it's actually making me think I should do this more often. Our producer, Sarah, sends me each week who our guests are, and I get very excited and do a bit of research. And I feel like you were just sent out of heaven because <laughs> I am totally, slightly losing my mind with too much business, trying to be a mummy. And a friend actually said to me, have you thought about talking to a sort of life coach mm. or a career coach? And I've always just thought, never even thought about that, you know, entering my mind. So I'm very excited to talk to Good. you in a minute Good. and delve in. Not that I'm going to use this for my own personal coaching. <laughs> we can chat behind the scenes. <laughs> um, but I do want to start with your book, JJ. Congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah. Tell us about it. Well, I, I started my business in 2015. I was a journalist writing about fashion and design. And I launched this website where I was selling my vintage collection of clothing, but I was showing it on all of the creative cool women of Milan and really diving into their homes, to their tabletops, to how they entertained. And I had this whole section on how to live like an Italian. And um, eventually I dropped the journalism career, got into making new clothes, and new homeware. So the, the company morphed a lot. And over COVID, it was really funny. And a book agent came to me and she was like, JJ, the world needs bright Italian joy and those gorgeous tables and all the clothes and all this. And I want you to do a book on this Italian lifestyle that you were talking about. And I said, you know, I'm kind of bored of that by now, but I really want to tell the story, my personal story, mm. of the journey through Italy. Because when I moved 22 years ago, I came from New York. I had a high-powered marketing position at Calvin Klein. I arrived to Milan, no family, no friends, no job, no cell, I mean, no smartphone, mm. okay, no wireless, had no cooking skills didn't understand the culture, didn't understand my environment. I found them disorganized, late, like <laughs> chaotic. Everything was uncertain. Maybe I'll see you, maybe I won't. Maybe I'm coming to dinner, maybe I'm not. Like what? Well, everything like LA then. <laughs> exactly. Oh. It was just, it was, everything was frustrating. And I'll remember, I'll never forget, there was this one day where I just had this huge mind shift. It was at the bank. All of my sort of major like <laughs> happenings happened at the bank. Um, where this teller, you know, after I get up to see this bank teller and he's like, I always used to get so angry that why am I waiting in line like for six hours? This is crazy. And I finally get up there and the guy is like, he reaches out behind him and he brings me out this bag of fresh green beans. And he's like, these are from my garden and these are for you. And I was like, oh my God, these people are the most kind hearted. They might be slow. They might be late, but it's a relationship based culture. So this book talks about all those lessons that I learned from Italy that aren't just about beautiful, superficial things, but really about how to rewire, reprogram my brain, my heart, and just to become a better person. So that's what the book is about. How beautifully Amazing. told. It was really like, hold on, you know, cool your jets. It's time to just like sink into your experience and not try to blast through life. I literally just had to sink in to my environment. And that is a very, for us Anglo-Saxon go-getters, that's a scary place to be. So I had to learn about that, that place of the void 
And, you know, I kind of call, it's called Mama Milano because there's a lot of divine mother feminine energy happening in Italy, where I, whereas I had come from like ball busting, mm. American, masculine energy, go, 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 do, 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 build, 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 yes. and be successful. Like, what is that? An Italian success is not based on their career and how much money they have in the bank. It's like, are they vacationing and eating properly? Mm. And in fact, mm. like, I learned how to vacation properly from, from the Italians. This is going to be resonating with a lot of people, I think, just hearing you speak, self-included. Like, this <laughs> right? is the opposite of my life. Yeah. I think for us working yeah. moms in London, that I'm your former self. I'm definitely not. I haven't got the spiritual yeah. practice in. I haven't slowed down. And it's kind of scary as it's well. Like, I can't so wait to read the book. Scary. Would you write this into a TV show or a movie? Because this is just a beautiful story that You're I almost so want to cute. see. I want to see as well as read. Maybe. You never know. Oh, well, I'm just putting it out there, JJ. But that's what's cool about Fingers creations crossed. of any yeah. kind. You just throw it out there and then they take a life of their own. Yeah. You know, Perfect. and then, I mean, that that's the goal. Yes, you're right. It's so yeah. pertinent right now to talk about what, what you're saying and, and so much harder to do, it, you know, easier said than done. Because the idea of being still, I know I'd be rubbish at it. I'm sure I could do it eventually. Gives me but anxiety. There's... Right. <laughs> How about you yeah. guys? Uh, would, have you got books in you? Maybe one day, when I'm still enough to write one. Got to do that bit first. That'll be the spiritual journey, you know. It's like it's, it's, and what you're saying, sort of being comfortable with that stillness, because I think now there's so much, you know, we can pop in our AirPods, we can listen to podcasts just constantly, and actually that silence is something that so many people are unfamiliar with, because it gives us that opportunity to be with our thoughts, and it's those thoughts that a lot of people are often like running away from because it's like, need to do this, need to do that. That go, 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 but go, But there go. are ways to get into the stillness that are like super pleasurable. Mm. Okay. So That's like true. when you're getting your next massage, mm -hmm. bring consciousness to that. You know, you can practice stillness when you're in the bath. You just want to like, you just want to merge like, oh my gosh, I am in stillness. And then the consciousness and the awareness of like, I'm okay. I'm doing really Amazing. well. Let me just yeah. release. Yeah. <laughs> no, that is helpful because practical advice is so crucial as well. Nicola, what about your book? I feel like maybe, maybe I'm putting it out there. I'm picturing myself, you know, taking myself off to Italy for a, a month, having that slow pace Eat of life, life and just, yeah. Watch the space. I'll be back. And I'm I'll sure be people do it. ask you though for the written advice as well. Yeah, and I and I like what you said earlier. I, I'm very much for that practical advice mm. because I do. I think it's so important that we just have those little ways that we can bring in just small changes into our everyday to help us think in a different way, to help us have a different perspective, to help us, you know, have a little mindset shift that actually in itself will then go on to create little moments of happiness or more calm. I remember one of my examples, I used to always get very stressed sitting in traffic jams. So I just wanted to get to the destination. And it's like, control the controllables. You know, there's nothing you can do in that situation unless you physically got out of the car and walked, but you can't. So it's like, actually, how can I make the most of the situation? Yes, I'm stuck in traffic. Yes, I'm going to be late. Yes, it's frustrating. But why not put on a pop uh, podcast and do that or listen to music or call a friend and it's just those little tangible things yeah, you have to surrender yeah mm -hmm. let go they, they let go of the need little to like micro surrenders yes. that then just allow you like there's nothing i can do yeah yeah and that's okay and it makes it suddenly just melt away that yeah. frustration and annoyance and it takes practice but ultimately you're only doing yourself a disservice by not you're, right. you're getting more and more irate and annoyed yeah at something that's totally out of your control. Yeah. TV presenter and national sweetheart Rochelle Humes and Pilates extraordinaire Bryony Deary have teamed up to create a new passion project brand. Next up, they tell Olivia Wayne all about it. I'm now joined by two women killing it in their respective fields. The primetime TV presenter, author and entrepreneur, Rochelle Humes, plus the woman synonymous with the world of Pilates and fellow entrepreneur, Bryony Deary. Ladies, they've joined <laughs> forces as well to launch an exciting new brand called Cloudcher, and they're here tell us all about it. Welcome to you both. Thank you. It is such Thank a pleasure us. having you here. It's lovely we to are, be here. We're very lucky to have you two in the building at the same time talking about this incredible <laughs> new business. What is it? Why did you get together? Just tell us how it all started. Oh my goodness me. This, how long have you got? Yes. <laughs> Cloudcha is our matcha and wellness brand, which we are just, it feels weird that we're actually talking I about know. it and we're about to launch. It's actually crazy. Um, 
Bryony and I met almost, say, what, a year and a half, two yeah. years ago when Bryony was training me. Um, and now we're in business together. We don't really train anymore <laughs> together. I know. Really I know. Like, that's so we're sad. Like, I know. We're like meetings, product research. Yeah. I'm like, can we do a Go class back to soon? the class. I know. We need to rethink how our meetings work. <laughs> um, and basically, we are huge matcha fans. We have both been in our own sort of right for a long time. And if you follow both of us on Instagram, you will know. Yeah, we yeah I feel like, like we do know the legit. It's legit. This is, this is, this is legit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry for all the green content, guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and basically, I was working on a matcha brand, as was Bryony. And we had this oh. conversation one day. And she was like, so what have you got coming up? She, I'm so excited. I'm actually working on a matcha. And I was like... <laughs> I'm going to say this now in case you feel like I'm one of those girls that do that thing to you, but I also have. And then we discussed where we were at with said yeah. brands and we both were doing the thing that the other one hadn't. Yeah, mm. it was it was spooky. It was, wasn't it? And then we were like, are we sort of missing a trick here? Should we yeah. just do this together? And then instantly we found it so much more fun yeah. that we could bounce off one mm. another. And I think where we've got our both our own businesses, it's so nice to work together and have mm. kind of that bouncing off of, each, off of the ideas and everything. Is this kind of the first business you've gone into partnership with for, for both of yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, for me. And how different is that to run a business with someone and have someone not only to help but also accountable to or it's nice, separate yeah. it's nice to embark in a passion project with someone that's equally as passionate when you're on your own and it's your passion and you build a team around you to make it happen it's brilliant but it's kind of your tunnel vision yeah. but it's so lovely to have one another isn't it and to get so excited together and just you know have yeah. that focus and and as you said it came so organically and also there's such a gap in the market mm. for it so yes, we're so excited you. about mm. if you want this. to dabble at home you don't really know where to start yeah well, this is, that's is half the battle isn't it's it it's a minefield yeah. out there i think you assume that you have to be able to <laughs> it's the wild west it, it really is uh, you, you, yeah. you assume that you have Japanese to go to grade wild west exactly yeah exactly that. you, you know what that means and it all sounds so elitist and that's the problem yeah. and you think you should be going to like a super bougie you know coffee matcha bar or yeah. a deli to have one mm. when actually you can make a really pretty good one at home the most interesting thing is you are successful business women and of course there are must be loads of challenges when you start your own business so yeah. what have some of them been for this project any challenges with sourcing or you know, oh, anything yeah. for us um with covid a lot of the um matcha farms were not accompanying visitors mm. so, for us so to go there has been problematic yeah so things like that have been challenging and where are the farms mainly in Ours France. is in Uji. Uji. So having mm. to deal with time zones and trying oh. to get everything sent mm. over and testing and then tweaking and whatever. It's been, um, it's been challenging. Yeah. But challenging. It's, it's so good. Challenge, I feel like And I think for us, we started, as we said, as such a passion project. Mm. And even since we've sort of announced it, we've sort of increased all, if volumes on orders because of the response. Then you go into like, do we ship it by sea or by air? It's all just, it's it's a little, yeah. it's a moving piece, isn't it, girl? 100%. <laughs> My yeah. moving, moving piece. Part. We're learning as we go. Yeah. Now you said it's a match brand and a wellness brand. Mm. Is there another element therefore to Cloudshare? that we don't know about yet? Yes. So, <laughs> yes, yes, there In a nutshell, yes. yes. So there's, Can you tell us? There's definitely more to come, which is so exciting. But I think kind of where we came from doing the Pilates and then going and making a matcha together and sitting there, it was kind of about having that mindful moment. So we always wanted to have that link throughout the business. Mm -hmm. You two seem to get on really well. Obviously, okay. you are in sync. Um, not the band. Um, but <laughs> I love the band. No. Yeah. Love Unfortunately, band. you're not them, but yeah. you are in <laughs> tune with each other. I'm not, I'm not JT. <laughs> but what happens if there is a decision or you're like passionate, like, no, no, this has mm -hmm. to be the way, and you don't feel that way or vice versa? How do you navigate that? I think it's stepping outside of yourself always for that second, and you know, you're. You, what we're both doing is for the love of the brand and we're both so passionate about yeah. it. So whatever it is that's going to benefit that and what's the right decision. And when it comes to the creative and everything around that, we actually are nailed on. Because this is the yeah. brand that we wanted to be on shelf, right? So yeah. we're, we're developing that. So we, I think we've been really fortunate. I also think it's no, really no. important to, to disagree as well. I think that that's yes, how that's you true. tweak and make your mm -hmm. um, kind of perfect model at the end. You know, sometimes I'll say, well, I feel so strongly about this. I and just I can't. And I perhaps don't on and that. Then, and then she'll be like, okay, well, I'm not bothered either way. So let's kind of go or, your way. Or, yeah. you know, or and vice then versa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some things that I'm like, oh, actually, I've not really, I'm easy on that. So if you're really yeah. for this, then yeah. Exactly. You take that. Yeah.
Yeah. Do you have different roles as well, or on every decision does it come back to both of you? It's I guess of... that's kind of what's evolving yeah. as we go yeah. because we are both so keen on the aesthetic and that side, of, like the creative. We love that stuff. <laughs> both that's of the fun us. bit. Obviously, yeah. that's the fun bit. But it's but actually I... the hard bit. Think how many yeah. rounds we've been through. Yeah. On creative. Like if For you look sure. at the early stuff, it's crazy isn't yeah it? are you quite decisive because there's not enough yeah. time to deliberate i'm so you decisive. know what you yeah. like you know what you don't to a fault actually yeah. i'm like no 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 that's what it should be and then nine times out of ten i'm right but as in like because i know myself and yes. it's ultimately about mm. us right when you're your own business yeah um but then sometimes i'm i do like that like Oh, actually, yes, no, I, that's, that's not what I would do, actually. Who was I thinking I was that day? Yeah. You know? yeah. like sometimes <laughs> you doubt my head how you... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you have any advice, like a single piece of advice for any women friends who want to start a business together? Like, what's the main overriding thing? I would say test your market, test your product, mm. test your business, um, whatever it is, do something that you can do like a small sample group. For us, we kind of knew that the audience were there. We were so lucky kind of separately that we yeah. had that. Were well, people asking you both about Match, about Pilates, yeah. Yeah, about exactly. Wellness? And I think it doesn't have to be the obvious. I think that's something for me. I think particularly in what I do, it's like an obvious thing to perhaps, I don't know, have a clothing brand now or going to skincare or however that looks mm. like who would have thought you know there's a celebrity that's partnering in a brand that's got something you know that's a matcha brand yeah. like it's really random but whatever you're passionate about and that's across the board as long as it's authentic to you and that's the proposition then I think you've got to go with it and if you can find yeah. someone that you have that passion in common with mm. oh, and even keep it business like we can then socialize at dinner we could have disagreed or something in the day and been like well no that's not oh I don't know I'm not sure about that yeah. and then go for dinner and leave it there yeah I think you're good at that yeah you I don't think take you have it with to you. be yeah. yeah that's a great tip especially as a friend who you would socialize with out of work yeah, yeah. that's great advice mm -hmm. I want to ask you top tips for getting the best out of your product but I think we should do that <gasps> in situ let's start with the process how do you start what are all the bits let's go because there's a lot of gear here. Yeah. And do you know what we said the other day? You didn't really know how to make like a tea and coffee overnight. It got perfected over time, a latte, a cappuccino. Mm. But Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> you just need the right stuff. What's Absolutely the first that. step in this beautiful matcha making session? So we boil the kettle at 80 degrees. Um, Preferably, if you don't have an 80 degree kettle, mm. don't worry about it. That's you can right. do it, use a normal kettle, but the taste is going to be at its best if you do it at 80 degrees. Okay. And then we've got our lovely little cloud chip pot here. Beautiful. This Thank is you. my yeah. pride and joy. Literally. I don't have kids, so this is like my baby. <laughs> oh, I have three and it's replaced them, so <laughs> yeah, what exactly. does that say about me? <laughs> and this is your, the idea is that this is your perfect matcha serving. Oh. So you take a little scoop, put it in our bowl. Oh, which goes to what you said earlier yes. when you were putting way too much in, right? It's, oh my it's God. essentially a teaspoon. And then we would pour a, do you want to do it? Okay, I'll, I'll do, do it because I'm do it. burning hot water. water. Around. Okay. And then Whilst you start doing this, I'm whisking. I'm just going to pop the milk in yeah. here so it's ready at the right time. Using? We are using, this is, have you had Nutty Bruce before? Never. I, I always laugh because my husband says it really well. He goes, Nutty Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> does a weird dance because he loves this one in a while. Nutty Bruce. Um, but this is a mix between Ooh. almond and oat. Ah. It's really nice. And you're kind of back Whiskey. and forth. Thing. So you're doing a Z. I have kind of done a few little speckles, but we're just redecorating. We love it. <laughs> so you're going it's not like mine. that in a quick, light motion. Sounds like something's happening. Yeah. Something's happening. This is brand new for this purpose. It looks Chic. It looks as chic as anything, but will it froth? Who knows, guys? So Maybe in time you can bring your little bubbles. Uh -huh. So that's what you want to create. Once you've done that, you've got all the um, lumps out of the matcha, and then you put it, put the whisk. Obviously, I would clean that and then put it on there. But so you whisk until it's bubbly, and then you know until you're you've good. got a small layer of tiny little bubbles. It looks like a very gentle foam. And then we're um, adding some more water. We like it heavier on the water rather than milk. Some people like full milk. Mm -hmm. You can really just do whatever. whatever um, suits you. And this is where you have to play around with what works yeah. for you. Yes, exactly. It. And this is where you also could add like, for example, I have a scoop of collagen we both do in our, in our yeah. matcha, so I would add the collagen into the, the milk, milk now. You don't, yes. not, you don't add things into the matcha. No, so it just just a collagen powder, I would say. I wouldn't because add it can like be a, a bit grainy, can't it? So, you yeah. know, it, it will really sort of oh. If you wanted to add a bit of maple syrup, you could add that in now, give it a stir if you like something a bit sweeter. You added water to get that going, a tiny dribble. 
Yes, you to get what, sorry, that this. Like, no, to get the matcha going. You did yes. a splash. Oh, yes. and tiny then little splash and just to make it Get it to a like paste. A, yes. Thank you. And sorry, then you top up, up again. Thank you. Just because then that's the way to whisk out yeah. all of the I lumps. I think this is a very clear step yeah. by step. Yeah. It's literally I, a bit of water, whisk it to a paste, again, a little bit more, yeah. and then yeah. you add your milk. Fine. And in terms of ratios, I like kind of two thirds water, one third milk. Yeah. Quite so, a and then drink I don't have a ways. teaspoon, so I'm going to reuse this. Okay, but ordinary. And then you would milk. stir in the milk at the same time, like you'd stir it I'm at the same to get time my, as pouring um, the milk. Oh, look at that froth, though. And then oh, that's the that make. I really Can want to go for it. Can we just Could you hold it up at, at an angle just to show without pouring it? And you get that real. That's what gives you the cloud, <laughs> the cloud oh, vibes. This is your cloud moment. How nice does it feel just <gasps> drinking out of a bowl? What are you drink out of this? Yes. Love that. It's a real treat. Ladies, I've learned a lot. I enjoy matcha. Ah, I love it. That's thank, good. You. This no, is thank you. Thank you. So interesting. Good luck. We will, of course, link everything below. And good luck for the release. Thank, thank you very so much. much. Amazing. Congratulations, ladies. The brand launches tomorrow at www.cloudchamatcha.com. Let's talk success. You're all very successful women. Um, my dad always had his own company, well, since he was the age of 24, I think. And, and I really love chatting to him about career. And he's always instilled in me that success is completely personal and subjective. It is not, you know, and that's hard. Mm. I'm, God, I still go off, off the rails a bit with that. Mm. But it's, it's, what, it's what you define it to be. So like, I'm going to start with you, Sophie. How do you define success? Impossible question. I think success for me will never be something that's fulfilled. But I was listening to actually another podcast um, with my favorite entrepreneur, Anya Heimarsh. And she said, if you look, your former self looks at where you are now, would you be proud of yourself? And then I was thinking about, you know, my 18 year old self, desperate for the career, doing every internship under the sun, so frustrated. And if I looked to where I am now, I would be thrilled. So therefore, is that a success? Yes, but now I'm looking to my next success. So it's always that, and maybe that's what keeps you going and drives you as an entrepreneur, but to sit there and think, oh, congratulations to me, you know, I've made it, is never gonna be something where I'm at. I think I'll always feel, I just want the next goal. Can you talk, so you've been in business for seven years with Sophie List London. Right. Can you tell us about the brand? I started it because I was so desperate to find a, uh, affordable yet luxury earring actually to wear to my wedding that and I just couldn't find it anywhere there was the Cartier's which for me at the time was totally unaffordable unobtainable or just something that I felt wouldn't last throwaway jewelry which wasn't where I was at either so I decided to design the earrings and then it all snowballed from there they came the ones you're wearing actually the fallen stars which are actually my biggest success to date and um, it all snowballed from there. And I was always an entrepreneur at heart. I was always looking for the, you know, the idea that was going to go boom. Mm. And uh, so this happened to be it. And it just went from there. I feel like the company evolving with me. It's the next step I'm looking for now. Forever jewellery is more sustainable. That's it now. That's Sophie List. That's where I'm at. But that's um, huge. And I think also success in terms of where you're at in life. You know, you're a mummy. A mummy. You know, you live in yeah. the coolest part of London. I think it's sort of, it's, it's, again, back to being relative. It's all relative. Like, even getting out of the door this morning was a win. <laughs> I'm exactly. telling you, odd socks day. It High was, five. Um, yeah, I know. We made it. We're all here. And I mean, kudos to the mums for like doing anything, really. It's a funny one because there are days when like I'm filled with adrenaline and, and I sort of love it. Yeah. But then you're, you're taught to be, well, it's hard to tell where the line is of like going a bit too far and suddenly Definitely. you're like, oh no, actually, wind it back in a bit. Wind it back in. It's well, like I breathe we, through we, the neck. You know, we need to find these rhythms, you know, these rhythms. The earth has its rhythms of its seasons. Our day has its rhythms with you know the sunrise the sunset darkness etc our personal rhythm like we're now moving into fall winter things are quieter i think you go more inward so it's okay to be really jazzed up and to be filled with energy and then you need to yeah. have that replenishment time the difficulty is if you're always on mm. like that mm -hmm. I, it, no but it is interesting what you're saying about seasons not to talk about LA again, but living there was amazing. But the sun is always shining. And I truly missed the feeling of autumn and winter. 
And I couldn't quite work out why other than reasons like, oh, it's pretty when the leaves change. But actually, I think the older I get, the more I realise it does force you inside. And a friend of mine who's actually an amazing landscape uh, gardener, Butter Wakefield, and she wrote a beautiful post the other day about how she loves the um, evenings drawing in and how dark it gets early. Now, she's the first person I've ever heard mm, or yeah. read say that because most people moan about it. And I thought it's quite nice to turn it on its head. And she said, it forces me to sit by the fire and I read my book, I do my tapestry. Granted, she's not got toddlers running around. No, but okay, yeah. it made me think about it in a different way because again, it's temporary. It's a yeah, rhythm. Yeah. Exactly. So there's these moments where we're very expansive and then there's some the moments where we go inward and you just have to honor that. You know, and they're, you know, not judge it that like, oh, now I'm slower. You know, actually there's incredible, amazing things that can come from that place yeah. of stillness and, and more quiet. And you don't have to be totally still, just more <laughs> quiet, you know? It's also like the success quite, can quite often be spoken about from like a tangible perspective, you know, yes. in terms of career or, um, you know, status, you know, especially in corporate jobs, typically, you know, we're going kind of climbing up the ladder, but the success of the feeling as well, I think is an, always an interesting question. Um, you know, whether it's that you want to experience more joy, happiness, mm. connection, um, calmness, that's also a Absolutely. measure of success because we can have everything on paper. That's sort of part of my journey was like, you know, successful on paper, but feeling unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what does success feel like to you yes, as well as what does it so look true. like? 100%. Yeah. yeah, like I want to read these four books in the next six months, it's success, you know, exactly. Mm. And then nothing to do with business, yeah, but it no. might just be enriching. Or I want to have more, yeah. you know, white space in my calendar because yeah. that will give me <laughs> the opportunity to kind of do things that aren't just work related. Or I want to be able to just feel happy day to day. Um, and it's sort of, I don't know, that's a bit having more like goals. a bigger question, yeah, but it's sort of having goals. both yeah, the tangible sure. and the intangible element of success. Yeah. Do you find you work on that a lot with, with clients? Yes. Yeah, because a lot of my clients are very high achieving, sort of type A personalities, so ambitious, driven, yeah. which is always, you know, very exciting. But then they're feeling unfulfilled because they're constantly looking for that next thing. Where do you start? Where's, where's step one? Do you say write lists or like how do you get into that head of the, the person? Um, it's definitely sort of where are you now? Like what's going on? Talk to me about sort of how you're feeling, how the business is going or kind of career generally. And what does the ideal six month vision look like? For example, some people like working longer scale, other like to keep it quite short. Um, but six months helps to say, look, in an ideal world, this is what I'd be doing in six months time. And I was like, there's no ceiling. There's no, you know, just if anything could happen. And then it's very much about working backwards. Okay, so what's stopping you? What's the block? What are the limiting beliefs? What are the hurdles? So often they're self-imposed because it's all mindset related. Um, and then they'll be more kind of practical, whether it's like the strategy or the opportunities or, you know, those kind of things. So, yeah, I like to sort of reverse engineer where do you want to be so versus clever. where you are yeah. now. I love that. Can we talk about shiny object syndrome? I hadn't heard of that <laughs> until today. It's great for a jeweler. Have you heard <laughs> of it? Yeah, that's true. No, but I, I get it. <clears throat> I get it. Because then it's like... Yeah, it's sort of, I think <laughs> it's the, the idea of we see peers maybe doing similar things or maybe totally different things. You know, let's say someone that you used to go to high school with or posted on Instagram and they've just gone on this incredible vacation, you know, to the Maldives and water over water bungalow and you're like, I want that. So you sort of, then you try and go after that goal, but it's actually not aligned with how you enjoy spending your time on your holidays. You know, you'd prefer to be on a yoga retreat in India, for example. Yeah, and it's, it oh, yeah. happens, you know, of course it happens. It's, it's bound to happen. Um, but it's just, that's why I think linking back to this question around success, mm. when we're very clear on our definition of success and what that means to us, it helps us to stay focused on our path rather than yeah, getting true. distracted and trying to chase after someone else's, oftentimes without even realising. And mm. often that what you're chasing after, particularly with social media, is not real or what it seemed yeah. anyway, which is sort of the, the hollow part of mm, all this, mm, isn't it? Mm. Not to be too depressing, guys. Just <laughs> stick, to your, stick to your lane. That's believe true. in your, you know, yeah, your exactly. path. It's, it's okay if you don't want what other people want. You know, some people... Can be quite people, empowering, yeah. I think. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That was fascinating. Now, from one group of successful women to another, the Sheerlux team are very excited to have launched Blush Talent Management, a new agency to represent industry professionals, talented content creators, and some familiar faces. Take a look behind the scenes of the first headshot shoot. We 
are doing our first shoot for Blush, where we're basically doing stylized like cover headshots um, for the website. So Adam's currently gonna shoot them for us. How did you manage to rope Adam into this one? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> was, so, somehow we got him. We are at the Dalton, and this is their um, marketing suite, which you can see over there. It is on the 12th floor, like lit up. <laughs> really exciting. They kindly uh, offered us this apartment to shoot in today, so we're going to shoot partly in here because we have a lot of light in, and then we're going to go outside um, just over the bridge. I'm Toby, a Sare, uh, author, friend of the show, blush talent. Um, I do lots of things, but the main thing that I do is empower women who want to have children or do have children to rise through the ranks and grow their career whilst growing their family at the same time. Um, but also doing that whilst working full time, so lots of different things that I love doing. My top is from Toe, uh, my jeans are grey and I've just got some like old boots from Mango on and my earrings are from Jigsaw. I am Alexandra Dudley. I am a bit of a mix. I'm a food writer and a journalist and I do lots of lovely content creation, mainly in like food, a bit of fashion. I write a recipe column for Sherlock's, which is very fun. And a little bit of like interviews and stuff like that. Podcasty kind of bits. Yeah, amazing. You look good. Um, what actually is this? It's like a show, it's show room. It's show a apartment. marketing suite. I've got all the lowdowns. It's a marketing suite <laughs> and in a month's time turn it into three bedroom flats. Yeah, that is incredible. I'd like to live here. Flush is a new talent management agency. Um, we've got our full like, launch and roster now. So today is the day that we shoot everyone's headshots. We've got a real nice mix of women that we're shooting today from industry professionals like Tony and Alexandra, through to content creators like um, super stylish Emma Marilyn and Lisa Patel and obviously Shilla's team. So it's going to be a really fun day full of extremely stylish women. Hi, Michaela. Hi. So you're one of our newest members of Blur. Yeah, I am. It's been a long time coming. I, over the years, haven't had management. Um, I've always done everything myself with my team and I think I have such a trusting relationship with the, you guys and the team that it just kind of works really well. I am a master facialist, skincare expert and tanning expert. I have been in the industry now for 17 years. I am a master of the inside out facial massage. Anything body and skin, I live and breathe and I have done forever. And how did you get into it? Ah, I left school and I went straight to college, I went to beauty college um, and I did my MBQs and I entered the industry when I was 20 and that was backstage on shooting with Gucci and Vogue for doing nails just so I could get myself out there and then offering everyone a facial or a body treatment just while they were there or the models or the celebrities or whoever we were working with I'd say do you want a facial out the back because I just wanted to get my hands on people's faces and then it just grew and here we are 17 years old so today these trousers are from Cezanne and um, I have my really old school uh, Saint Laurent boots on and then today I have a very random juicy couture sweats on. I just dragged it out of the cupboard because we've just moved and I can't find anything. <laughs> but it works really well. Do you want that size? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> no, you just went to me. Got a very distinct <laughs> smell you, and her face move. was actually been shot <laughs> in the foot. <laughs> I didn't move. I meant it was really lovely. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Why did your face say complete opposite to I that? don't know. It's <laughs> So lucky with the weather. It was supposed to rain for all day, like a hundred percent up until this morning. And oh now it's hard to rain. Honestly, look at it. Sausage rolls, and I was like, oh, of course, it's my And then she said, you love a pan of raisins, actually. Make sure this is in the edit. Just <laughs> <laughs> utter nonsense. Maybe it's just like made up, like I'm like obsessed with sausage rolls. Oh. Yeah, she said he likes pan of raisins. She well. is, she's winding you up. She's like, <laughs> she's, 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 she's trying to sabotage you. So you don't, you haven't specifically requested sausage rolls for No, sure. never. <laughs> Wait till the camera turns off, and I'm like, where's my fucking sausage roll? <laughs> yeah, what are you wearing? I'm wearing. 
It's actually almost hit to Ryland. Ryland G, Omar, Caramel and Top. I don't even know if you're going to have to do this. You definitely will be able to get up from a squat. I can! <laughs> Oh, Thanks, Lou. Oh, God. Oh, honestly, go and have a look at that chair. It's like made of solid concrete legs. <laughs> so, I am Stephanie Rexburg. Um, I am an influencer, I guess. Um, but I'm also a brand consultant. So, I started in fashion. Um, I studied fashion at university and then I worked for Celine when Phoebe started there. Oh, I did. Yeah. What <laughs> Then I went to go and work for yeah. for Roland Moore, who is the most creative person I've ever met. Um, and then I went to work with Amanda Wakely, and I was travelling loads with them, and I loved it. But I was just kind of like, I'm going to settle down, have a serious job in London. So I went to work at a hedge fund, complete change, and I missed the creativity. So I set up my brand consultancy, and then worked with kind of finance brands, but also beauty, fashion, jewellery, travel. Um, and then since I had my baby last year, I've kind of dialed things back a little bit and qualified to be a sound healer. So my name is Lisa Fentu. I work in a tech company. Um, I'm also a content creator and I'm creating my own fashion brand at the moment. How did you get into content creating? I started two, two and a half years ago. So I just started posting outfits and um, I went from there. I actually got these yesterday. Um, they're the Totem um, jeans, the Totem shoes. Um, the top is another story. Um, this one is also another story. And the frock blazer. Um, I think it might be cost. The earrings are from um, a New York based brand um, called About. What's the, what's the my vibe? Is it like I'm just like cool boss bitch? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But not grumpy. The everyday vibe. But not grumpy. Not grumpy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do switch arms. Sorry, and then like just lean. You have that one <laughs> drop, drop. And then like just lean on her. Yeah, that's it. Like, could you just actually just switch your arms? Hey, <laughs> you've changed. I've changed. I'm in my look for the shoot now. I am wearing a shirt by Kate, a Goldie jeans, a day boots, the hunch belt, and. Lee Studio earrings, which I am obsessed with. Thanks so much. Hi hey Emily, nice to meet you. I'm Emily. Hi, I'm Emily. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the Blush family. Thank you. I'm very excited to be part of it. Um, but I'm also known as Styling Emily Beanie. So I post on social media, on TikTok and Instagram, all about fashion and upcycling and lots of fun. Yeah. Huh? That's me. Oh my Hi, Marilyn, how are you? Hi, good to see you. So, we've obviously seen you on the show before and yeah. on Instagram on site, but yeah. for people who are new to Marilyn, tell us what you do. I'm known to be a fashion content creator, but I also do athletics so and as well. So, I started like 2019, 2020, but this was after many years of being told by my husband and my sister to like start posting their pictures. So, and what are you wearing today? Today, I'm wearing a Frankie Shop suit. A cos turtleneck, YSL belts, and sambas, which I will actually change to heels later. Let's go! Please tell me what we're doing. Oh. You have to say if you were. So Kate asks. <laughs> Demand. 
Can you just like, can't, just can't someone else do it, please? I don't, I really don't want to do it. I really do not want to do it. Okay, ready? Because you've got Bia. You see her. You see me. Oh. You see me. see, we're done. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So, what you have to do is say, when you see me. This is how you feel, isn't it? Yeah, do it, do it, but then on me, I'll take the picture. Yeah. <laughs> when you see me? Got it. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Just me, you and the lens, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel hot. Say. <laughs> God, girl. Yeah, we've got some ice over. Hey. Hi, Vanessa. Final, Final group. Who are they? Final group. Well, the legends, the one and only, <laughs> Sherlock Skirlies. So Grace, what are you using on Georgie? Um, so I'm using actually a MAC eyeliner at the minute, and um, just a long hair lash line. Oh my god, I've actually got that, is that one? Teddy. Yeah, yeah. I use that. It's, it's really, it, it looks and I'm just noticing what a Gucci, we are such, I am yes. such a Gucci. Their packaging. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. so. Their yeah. mascara is amazing. Do you use their mascara? Yeah, I do use their mascara. I don't have it here. It's, it's mega, so isn't it? Good. It's really heavy yeah. and it goes on yeah. really well. Really nice setting spray. It's like rose water. Oh. So it always like hydrates the skin. It's really fresh. Yeah. Charlotte, what are you wearing to save the sheet? I am wearing white shirt by the deck, um, an in bling blazer, me and M trousers, and I will put on some heels. H M head to toe. Is it? Yeah. Big skirt cardi. Oh. I know. I'm wearing a ray blazer, a totem tank, wardrobe NYC trousers. And the best boots, I nearly bought another pair actually today. <laughs> They're H&M. You want to see something you love? It's nice when you have your blazer out, like, with your hands and yeah. I mean, it's quite power, but yeah, so, um, maybe a bit too power. A bit too power. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, stop. No, god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So much alive. Guys, we're gonna go out. So if you just pack up everything so you're ready to go when we come back home. Is the group shot us all supposed to be going on that side? No. Sure, we're just yeah. all in. <laughs> That's what, just in the, the group. Yeah. Levels. Yeah. You're gonna be and I'll, I'll be like, like, like this. I'll be like <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> What one time I said it, and here we are. <laughs> okay, actually, Leia, we're all going to leave us. I don't think we're going to send us. Well, it just feels like I'm doing my own new culture. So we're smiling. Yeah, they are, the yeah. Well, I think the amount of people makes it but, but we've got some really good shots. Yeah, we've we'll we'll shot the like talent. Um, we've got our industry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some really nice shots to show our kind of roster of talent at Bush Mountain Open. So, oh, good job. Thanks, Adam. That is a wrap. Well, congrats, Georgian team. I've no doubt that will be a roaring success. Can't wait to see more. You may have noticed, the observant viewer. <laughs> Hot off the press. These books, they literally just came by courier. Yay. So we've got three covers. Let's have a three look. Three different covers. Let's have a look. Everyone yeah. gets one. Wow. Yay. Um, okay. That one goes with your outfit the best, I feel. This one goes with my outfit. Um, You're this, keeping I've, that one. I've got this one. No, you can, here you go. You can have a look. <laughs> we, can, we can share. This oh, is the more minimal one. No, it's beautiful. But, but they are through. lovely texture. Were you, Thank were you, you. Were you very specific about the Yes. Well, touch. I wanted them to, I mean, because we 
are well known for all of our um, oh. fabrics and our materials, some of which have vintage prints. Um, these are all vintage patterns that come from a silk archive in Lake Como, which wow. was our very first um, collaboration that we ever did. And um, so I just wanted to... It's gorgeous. Yeah. That's incredible to know. I'm going to segue <laughs> from that onto my next question, which is, I think there's a pressure slash openness. It can be an opportunity in today's career path to wear so many hats and be multifaceted you know you know you can't just do one thing necessarily how do you navigate that I'm going to start with New Nicola how do you distill your personal brand or make the best of it and mm. it doesn't just apply to people in the public eye at all yeah I I do think it's very important to have a personal brand to the degree that you are comfortable with sharing your life outside of your business or career and the reason for that is because there are so many, you know, business coaches, jewelry designers, uh, fashion brands that if, if you're in sort of people facing roles, so much of why people invest in you and your business is because of you. You know, your energy, your personality, your style of teaching, uh, your creativity. And so if we're solely focused on the business element, it's much harder to stand out. And the way that I like to incorporate my personal brand and my business is by kind of leading with my values. So things that I am very, yeah, my, my values, so freedom, um, growth, success, connection, things like that. And that allows people to create really, like form relationships with me much more easily, um, create those, that trust as well that I think is so important in these types of roles. Um, but I don't think it's necessary to sort of give the behind the scenes of life mm. if it's not completely relevant of course yeah. if you want to but that then takes away a bit from the business itself so there is that blend but I do think it's important if you're in a digital entrepreneur to have that personal brand to help you differentiate yourself and form greater connections and build that trust and allow people to yeah have that relatability with you um, as a way of them being like yeah I want to work with you or yeah I sort of want to uh, invest in the business yeah how do you approach that, Sophie? It's such a difficult one for me, and I think that I haven't got it right, and I'm struggling to find the balance because I'm a mom, I've got a family, and I really think that's something to be celebrated, you know, especially like empowering women all the way. But as you say, it's not relevant to the everyday person who's looking for jewelry. And I find it difficult to, I don't want to share my kids' lives that much, but there's so much part of me and my business. So obviously the business is cool. You know, I've named it after myself as well. Mm. So it's about me and I'm not particularly confident in front of the camera. I don't want to, you know, be filming myself all the time. It's about other women. And uh, so finding their faces to sort of, you know, drive the stories through the brand as well is so important to me. And it's like, you know, things that are important, my values through other people as well as myself. But I find it very difficult, you know, knowing what content to share and where to draw the line. So I kind of abstain from doing it a bit too much, I think. You so follow your gut, I think. It's very difficult, mm. yeah. I mean, I do too. I share up to this level, but then I'm yeah. also very private, actually. There's a lot that's exactly. not going. But I think what you do as a brand is you really do celebrate the women that I you... I love that, yeah. yeah. Massively. Yeah. And I think that is creating a personal brand through the, it, through the women, your peers, and the women exactly. that you inspire. Exactly, and I feel you. like when I was younger, one thing I struggled, I was so desperate to work and have that career and get on the ladder, and I saw all these iconic women who were at the top, and I wanted to be them always, but I couldn't, I couldn't get on that ladder and I didn't know how to do it. So learning other women's stories and sharing them with my you know, people, I hope to be able to inspire people to just sort of get going and find a way to get where they want to be as well. And they think most of the time the answer is just doing it, mm. do something totally. and that will lead to it. But, and I think um, that element is almost your personal brand. It's like the storytelling exactly. element. I and love that the story storytelling of an inspiration yeah. behind a piece or the reason why it's you so created true. something. That's it's your personal brand. Everything has a story. Every mm. piece of jewellery I make has a story and it symbolises something. And that can be different to other people, but the fallen star is a guidance and direction. Who doesn't want a bit more guidance and mm. direction, you know? Absolutely. That like sort of light that's taking you in the, you know, where you're meant to be, follow the light. I love so, that. Um, I couldn't really know yeah, that. Yeah, it's cute. And I feel, I feel like each of us needs to really follow and be true to ourselves. Mm. So if you're someone who doesn't want to be in the spotlight, don't mm. feel comfortable in front of the, the camera, 
that's okay. Like, respect that and then realize that, yes, as, as you were saying, other human beings react to other human beings. So how are you going to create that anyway in your company? Yeah. It doesn't have to be with you. Exactly. Right? So you're doing that. No. Like I, each yeah. of us, I feel yeah. like there's a lot of pressure to like do what works. No, mm. no, no. You have to do what works for you. Mm. It's back to Especially. the shiny. Yeah. Shiny objects. And, and yeah. that, that, the sooner we realize, and that's so hard because we're told to do things a certain way, like follow this process, follow this formula, this, you know, but actually the more we resist going against what we true, like deeply want, the longer it's going to take us to get there. Mm. So it sounds like mm. that's sort of working for you in that sense. Because otherwise, if you're standing on, you know, on camera talking about something that didn't feel comfortable, that then is felt by people who are watching totally. it. And it that's just true. Is, wouldn't true. work out. Yeah. So that's it for today. Thank you so much to everyone on the SL team. And on next week's show, Polly is back with more wonderful guests. We have a fab winter styling tip from Ebony, Francis and Lou and an exciting new beauty launch. In the meantime, we would love it if you guys could comment below, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely day. Bye.